Hello friends, let's play a quick game of choose your outfit path. Path A. You picked A. You have an idea of how you want to look. You sort through your monstrous amount of clothes and find nothing to wear. Give up on plans, buried in clothes, decide to watch Netflix on the couch instead. Or you pick B. You found your best features, know what event to dress for, and choose clothes that give off the exact vibe you are going for. Oh my gosh! So obviously we all want to have personal style that reflects our own true identity. And we want that style not to just be a cute top that we like, but we want it to be the full look. We want to feel good in our clothes, we want to look good in our clothes, and we also want to find strength through style, which is what I'm about. We want to take a piece of clothing and make sure that it fits our lifestyle goals as well. Because it's not just about, is this a cute top? It's about, is this a cute outfit that communicates to the world what I'm about, makes me feel good, and makes me feel confident? Sounds like super simple, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe not. So most people give up on their style because they choose a style inspiration, or they follow a style icon that they like, and then they try to take that inspiration and wear it in their everyday life, and it doesn't work out. And then they think, oh, well, this is, just isn't for me. Throw it in the trash. We need to learn the basics of how to create an outfit that works for our lifestyle that is also an outfit we actually like to wear, not just something completely functional. Because style is the easiest way to communicate to the world who you are. And like, we all know the basics, right? Like, I, I hope so at least. Like, we're not wearing herb leisure bodycon dresses to our niece's baseball game. But what is so overlooked is what certain styles communicate and how they work with your body shape and your best features. We are gonna go through some styles of dresses, some tops, and some pants. And we're gonna look at the fabric of them, how it, the silhouette, and how all of those pieces really make an impact on the overall aesthetic. Each one of those pieces will help you highlight, enhance, or alter the way you look. And ultimately, you want to be in control of your outfit. So this process is all about finding your go-to pieces, but also understanding when to use your go-to pieces and when to use those other pieces in your closet that you like, but maybe aren't your everyday staples. Because we want to communicate the right look for the right event. That is key. Now, this video is 100% not about trying to conform your body to beauty standards. No, no. That is the opposite of what we're trying to do. Instead, we're going to find that what parts of your body do you just love? What parts of your body, you know, do you not really care about? And what parts of your body do you just not want to focus on when you dress? So we are not going to conform to one body type. We are all not going to have try to achieve the Kim K hourglass body shape because, well, I could never. And I'm not even sure I want to. Like the attributes of my body that I like best are not me trying to have an hourglass shape that I will never have. In this video, we're specifically going to talk about how do clothes and your outfit and your lifestyle and your personal taste all work together and how do we highlight the best parts about our specific body. So the first question that we wanna ask ourselves is what do we just love about our bodies? And you really only need one thing, but the more things you have, the better. We're gonna break it down. So for me, I like that I have a longer vertical line. I'm not super tall, but I look best when I keep my long vertical line intact, which means I'm not gonna break up my silhouette with a lot of separates. I look good in monochrome, I look good in tonal, and I look good in longer dresses. Now, I also like my shoulders. I think they're strong and they help me pull off a lot of boxier men's inspired pieces and I like that and I also like showing off my shoulders in in tops like this I also like backless pieces I like to show off my back when it's appropriate and I feel like it adds a nice sexy touch <laughs> Everyone is going to be different. Some people are going to love their long legs, other people are going to love their waist hip bust ratio. It's totally up to you. And if you don't know where to start, go put on your favorite outfit, the outfit that you just feel so freaking good in. Does it have a super body conscious silhouette that shows off your curves? Does it have an open neckline that shows off your beautiful collarbone? So start with pieces you love and see if there's some common threads within them. So here you can see that I really feel my best in a tonal or monochrome outfit, like right here. On the counter side, if we take an outfit that I don't really feel off, shows off my best features, the features that I am most proud of, it would be something like this. I feel like this outfit has a lot of horizontal breaks, so when you automatically take the outfit in, your eye isn't going from top to bottom. It's getting stuck in all these breaks. 
and the high contrast colors is really highlighting those breaks, which for me, when I want to show off my legs and my verticality, doesn't really work for me very well. This is going to be different for everyone. Some people may thrive with an outfit like that. Personally, I don't. And it's not even that I think I look bad. It's just that I know when I put it on, I don't feel my best. I don't feel like confident. Open up your notes app and let's get into it. Find two parts of your body that you love. Find one part of your body that you're just, eh, maybe want to hide a little bit or de-emphasize. And find one or two parts of your body that are neutral. You can look at your verticality your head to toe, you can look at your shoulder lines, your torso, your bust to hip to waist ratio, your legs and arms, and even specific body parts like your collarbone or your stomach. So now that you kind of have an idea of the pieces that you want to show off and the pieces that you maybe just don't really care if they're highlighted or not, you can start looking at silhouettes and what they can do for you. Let's start looking at some dresses first. We're gonna do body conscious dresses, full and short. We're going to do flowy A-line dresses, short and full length, because it's not just the silhouette, it's also the hem length that will affect things. So when we look at the A-line dresses, you can notice that the nipped in waist creates the illusion and enhances the idea of curve. So if you don't have hips and you want to kind of pretend to have that hourglass shape or you want to highlight your, your hourglass, then the A-line is actually a great option for you. Whereas the body conscious dress, it is made for curves. However, it's in the longer length, it's great on me. I don't really have a lot of curve to my body. I have some, not a lot, but the longer silhouette really works for me. Why? It's showing off my shoulders, it's highlighting my verticality, and it's extending my longer legs. Whereas the body conscious shorter dress doesn't look as good on me. I feel like it shortens me and it highlights curves that I don't really have. The A-line enhances your shape and the body conscious dress exhibits your shape and that is something to consider. Now the other thing to really consider is the length of the dress. If you have a long vertical line, which is basically your shoulders to your knees, then you can pull off longer silhouettes easier. It's also true if you're more petite, longer silhouettes can sometimes swallow you whole. Now this is a decision you have to make for yourself. No one is going to tell you you can't wear long dresses as a petite person. That's completely silly. This is about your personal taste. Do you feel best when you have a full length silhouette or do you like a shorter hem? The best way to decide that is to take photos of yourself in the mirror, do it for like 30 days straight, and then really look at what you naturally gravitate towards. Then look at those photos. Do you like the way you look? If not, then it's time to start switching it up. Sometimes we innately know our hem lengths that we like and that's why they work so well. And sometimes we get stuck in our head with old outdated fashion rules. Don't let other people tell you how to dress. Figure out what hem length is right for you based on your best attributes and what you feel comfortable in. So the body conscious dress is also going to be a little bit more sexier. So let's talk about where we're going in these outfits. That's important too. Choosing your environment of what you're dressing for is a key element to looking polished and timeless and like yourself. Details are important, it's about the head to toe look, but where are you going in that head to toe look? So before you choose your outfit, if you're struggling, ask yourself, where am I going in this and what does this outfit need to accomplish? Am I going to be chasing a toddler down the playground or am I trying to impress my date? That matters. So let's move on to pants. And first we're gonna talk about wide leg versus skinny leg versus straight leg and what they do to your body. So again, the skinny pants are going to exhibit your curves. And skinny pants can sometimes make you appear shorter because in, when you take in an outfit, you're going from top to bottom. And when you have this curved line to follow, your eye doesn't go whoosh, it goes whoo. And those are essentially interest points for your eyes to take in. Instead of having this elongated line, we have some curve breaks. That's okay, it's a different look. Now with wide legs, wide legs tend to slim you down and elongate because we don't see that hip shape anymore. And especially if you go higher with the rise, you'll also get a very column-like effect. So with straight legs, they're kind of in the middle. They don't enhance your curves, they don't exhibit them but what they are great for is a foundational piece. So if you really want your top or accessories to shine, straight legs are a great go-to piece. Now let's also look at the weight of the pants. So we have wide leg jeans, we have a lightweight flowier wide leg pant, 
and we have a stiffer wide leg pant. Now the jeans automatically give a casual appearance, but because they're wide leg and they're with a classic top, they become very casual and polished. Now, the flowier wide leg pants drape along my hips a little bit more, so they give a softer effect. The softer fabric impacts your entire look. Now, the stiffer fabric appears probably the most architectural and the most traditionally business. The stiffer fabric definitely highlights the vertical and the vertical alone. It does not highlight the curve. So, what part of your body do you want to highlight? Where are you going? If I'm going to meet my friends for brunch, I'm wearing the jeans. If I want a casual, easygoing, polished look, I'm choosing the softer fabric wide legs. If I want a business casual look or to look really put together, I'm going to choose the stiffest fabric. Just to recap, the fabric of your clothes drastically impacts your outfit's intentions. You'll notice it here with the straight leg jean versus the straight leg trouser. The trouser looks more polished, and you should also pay attention to the rise of the pants. Here we can see the low rise trouser gives off a much more casual vibe than the higher rise. Let's see how this plays out with shirts. So first we have a men's button up, which is one of my favorite go-to pieces. And why is that? It doesn't show off my, my shoulders, but my shoulders, because they're broader, can carry a structure like that. And I opted for a French tuck because I think that's a more polished look when you're dealing with oversized pieces and you wanna have a balance point to them. So the oversized look is a much different vibe than let's say this silk blouse, which has the soft edges. It doesn't, it, we're not holding up any fabric. It's draping softly over my shoulders. It's forming to my body. There's movement to it. And then we take a more tailored shirt that's out of a crisp fabric. Each one of these pieces has a different vibe, aesthetic, and appropriate place to wear them. Could we wear all of them to an office environment? Most likely, but they all say different things about us. So just remember that fabric selection is almost as important as silhouette. So let's briefly talk about fashion and lifestyle and how they need to work together. So I am going to say you can totally be a mom who chases toddlers all day long and also be ins inspired by model street style. You do not have to say, oh, oh I only wear leggings now because I'm a mom or I have business casual, so I only have a wardrobe full of suits. What it does mean you have to do is you have to take that inspiration and then you have to tweak it to your lifestyle. And that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice the style of the inspiration. The more you know about how you wanna flatter your body, the more you can see style inspirations that also highlight those same parts. So basically what we're hoping to achieve in this video is to create your own set of style rules. Bo longer bodycon dresses that show off my verticality, open necklines that show off my shoulders. These are my style rules because they not only highlight my favorite aspects of my body, but they also work for my lifestyle. So it seems obvious, right? Like you don't have a closet with 20 red carpet gowns if you have no red carpet events to go to. But so many people get this wrong because they don't have a system to buy what they like and they don't have a system to evaluate their lifestyle and they don't know how to make a style inspiration their own. You may not have 20 red carpet gowns in your closet, but I ran into someone who had literally probably 20 to 30 going out tops and I asked her, how often do you socialize where these would be part of your everyday staples? And she said, oh, I go out about once a week where I'd wear these. Well, what about every other situation in your life? Why are you excluding those main lifestyle moments from your wardrobe. You need a plan when you shop. You need a plan for developing a closet that you love. That's also why I have the Craft the Closet of Your Dreams playbook. I'll link it below. And that is my course that kind of teaches you how to audit your closet, clean it out, and develop a lifestyle plan around your style inspirations. Because ultimately, this is about you. This is about you finding strength through style. This is about you finding clothes that you love and feel good in. The magic of finding all of this information and learning this information is to turn you into the most stylish version of yourself and wearing clothes that just make you feel freaking good. This isn't about copying style. It's not about having a $2,000 dress at your disposal. It has nothing to do with any of that. So take your style inspirations, find the silhouettes and fabrics that speak to you, and then from there, start highlighting your best features. I guarantee it will make you feel so good. And if you have a monstrous closet and you're like, I don't even know where to start, why don't you check out my video about how to shop your closet, which might give you some inspiration on that too. If this video has been super helpful, you can go ahead and like and subscribe. 
Oh, but before you do that, also comment what pieces you'd like to see next because we can definitely make this a series. We could do accessories, jackets, coats. Let's get into it. Until next time.